Hey there! Today we're going to talk about a pen that came in this box. It's an interesting box, has some texture. Um, pretty much just a cardboard box. And out comes this pen. This pen being a Jinhao X750. Bunch of versions, bunch of finishes. This is the stainless steel finish. I kind of enjoyed that. Okay, I'll cover the parts of the pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and um, that's all there's to it. No, that's not all there's to it. I'll do a writing sample. <sighs> I don't even know my own videos. Well, anyway, let's start with the cap. The cap has some interesting features. First of all, it has a dome, and that dome is highly reflective. I can see myself in there. I'm not sure whether I'm happy with that, but I can. Um, the dome ends in a nice little ring. I think that's pretty nice. I'm not sure how well you can see that. I know this won't focus, but at least gives you an idea of the ring. Um, pretty nice. Now we have a clip. As with most Chinese pens I own, the clip is very tight. Very tight, but not so tight that it cannot be used. And it has a very nice curvature. I, I think that's that's pretty. that looks pretty cool, actually. In front of the cap, there is uh, sorry, the clip. There's a sort of triangular thing in there. Um, I think that sets that's, that's pretty cool. Then we have a center band on the the, the cap, right? Yes, it is the cap. Um, I like the way that is designed. It says Jinhao, and then it has some. Those could be capitals. You know, you have a you know, Roman column. And you have these capitals with the rounded things. Are those Doric or Ionic? I always confuse the two. Well, it doesn't really matter. You have two of those, whatever they are. And then it says X750. So there's no mistaking what model pen this is. Now, what I like about this is that it sticks out. You can probably see that, right? Well, maybe, maybe you can't, but this, this center band, it, it sticks out a little bit. And there's a small you know, a band around that, above it, and there's another one below it. And the one on top, so above this center band, is on the cap, and the one below it is on the barrel. So that makes for a very balanced look, and I like that. The barrel ends in another shiny dome, shiny dome, with another ring, which makes the cap, it doesn't really click in place when you post it, but it's, it's on there very securely. Very securely. Can hardly get it off. Okay. Look at that nib. That nib is as big as the section. They put a really big nib on there. Um, big nibs are fun, right? And I, I, I guess it's cool. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether it looks out of place considering the whole size of the pen, but it, it there's something to it. It looks kind of cool. Uh, it has some picture on it. I, I think I've talked about that before. I can't see what it is. Is it a bug? Is it an old man with a beard? I, I, I can't make it out. And there's some curls and there's two Chinese uh, characters which I'm assuming stand for Chin Hao but I'm not sure. And then it, it says 18 karat gold plating which is fascinating because I don't see any gold but you know whatever. Um, section. As I said as big as the nib the feed Nothing too special, nothing fancy there. Section is somewhat tapered, is a very smooth plastic, um, but not, you, you have got the sort of polished, reflective plastic, this is matte, and that gives a, a pretty nice grip. I don't have the feeling my fingers are slipping or anything. Um, a nice little ring there, uh, chrome or something, and then that, that sort of the step down from the barrel. Um, you unscrew it, came with the converter. I've seen these converters many times now. I think they're, they're kind of nice. You can, in fact, just pull this part off and then, you know, clean it. I won't do it now because there's ink in it. Um, a, a little ball in there, small agitator, nice. Um, and you can also pull out the nib and the feed for cleaning, which I always like. Um, screw that back together. The cap is a Click on cap, slip cap, not a, not a screw in cap. And that's it. So, stainless steel looks nice, 
matte and then these, these reflective highlights. I don't think it looks that bad. Uh, the nib is fairly smooth. Um, as with most Chinese pens, I think it has a little bit of feedback, but you know you can smooth it out a little bit yourself if you like. And otherwise, it's it's definitely not scratchy or anything, so it's it's good enough to use straight out of the box. Um, what do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, I kind of like the looks. Uh, it's 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 nothing too flashy or, or too spectacular, but I think it looks nice and that center band. You know, it's 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 pretty cool. Things about it I don't like. Well, the the cap it's. On there extremely tightly, especially when you put it in. I got the feeling that very small drops of ink are launched from the nib because of the sudden shock of the click. And the problem with that is that if you post it, uh, then you will get ink on the back there. You may not notice that. Then you have problems. Recently, I gave this to someone, and she had to, to fill something out. Uh, I, I gave it to her, and I said, "Well, here you go." But because it's so tight, I just uncapped it and posted it for her. But she didn't like that. She had smaller hands, so she took the cap off. She was writing, and then the back of her hand got ink on it, now, which is, of course, a bit embarrassing when you you know give your pen to someone else and, and you, you you smear their hands with your ink. Apart from that. Simple pen. This is one of my 99 cent pens. I, I, I scour the eBay, you know, for uh, Chinese pens. It costs 99 dollar cents. Um, like a hobby. This is one of them. It's nice. Pretty decent size when posted. Definitely decent size. And that's all there's to it. So a simple pen, simple price. Nothing wrong with that. I, I kind of like it. Um, I think it's time for a writing sample. So that's all there's to it. I hope this was useful. And I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, writing with the Jin Hao. Well, that was some hard startup. I haven't had that yet. Jin Hao X750. You know, just to be sure, I'm going to put some extra ink in the feed. There we go. I was just uh, twisting the converter knob a bit there. Nothing fancy. Gene Howe X750. Um, the nib. Well, that would be a medium. The ink. Mont Blanc. Oyster Grey. I like the zinc. It's a bit lighter than I expected, but you know, I guess oysters, it's kind of this color. I hate shellfish. I really can't stand it. Uh, is an oyster a shellfish or is it? It's a mollusk, right? Oh, whatever. The quick brown mollusk. Swam over the lazy shell fish. There we go. Um, what about this nib? Well, quick writing. No real skipping. It was just a little bit there, but I think that was me. Um, it's an interesting nib. There is a, a smoothness. I I may get a little bit of feedback, which is not unpleasant. I'm not saying the nib is not smooth. It's just it's something I've experienced with more Chinese pens. They they give some type of feedback. I mean, okay, look at this. Here's a Lamy 2000M. And then look at this. It's nice, but it's just, there seems to be a bit more feedback on the paper, but, you know, it's not a big deal. Flexibility. Line variation. Not an extremely flexible nib. But you will get some line variation. Enough to bring out the shading of the ink nicely. 
I kind of like that. Okay, let, let's have a look at how wet this nib is, because I got the feeling that it's not the wettest nib on earth. Well, that's a fairly decent patch of ink. Reasonably wet. It's not, it's, it's, I would say it's a bit on the dry side, but it's, it's definitely not a Kalahari type dryness. No, well, that's it then. I, um, I hope this was useful. A nice inexpensive pen. And, um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.